Today I've got a video about how to install um, an automatic gate opener. This is a good example of how to save yourself a lot of money. I was quoted uh, two and a half thousand dollars to have an automatic uh, remote controlled gate opener uh, installed onto my swing gate on the driveway. Now I was able to buy uh, the kit for four hundred dollars delivered. <coughs> I'll do the fitting myself. So here's, here's the actuator here, which has a 24 volt DC motor in it, and this just pushes this uh, rod in and out to operate the gate. So this is an unlocked position at the moment. So uh, I'm going to show you how straightforward it is. Um, I mean, there's just no comparison $400 to $2,500. I'd prefer to keep that $2,100. Uh, other things. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. Here's the packaging. It arrives in a large box. You get the actuator, a solar panel, a couple of uh, cabinets, an electronic controller, two batteries and a heap of brackets and bolts. So the first thing I did was worked out where to mount the actuator. So I decided in this case to make my own end bracket. But you do get an end bracket in the kit, so it depends on the configuration of your gate. And then there's the bracket for the other end, for the motor end of the actuator. So that comes in the kit and it's adjustable for position. So the first thing to do is to use clamps to clamp it all in position. And you'll have to do a bit of experimenting and moving it around to get it, um, to get it right. The actuator is unlocked. You get a key to be able to unlock the shaft. And here you can see on testing the movement to make sure that I'm not running out of range on the actuator. The key thing is to make sure you have an angle, to have an angle of attack at each end. So when it's fully closed or fully open, it needs a, an angle there so that you generate a force uh, perpendicular to the gate to actually pull it open or to push it closed. So using the bracket, the end bracket there, you can um, pivot it to get that angle. So now that I've decided that that's the best place for the two brackets. I'm removing the actuator which is just held on by pins with a clip in the bottom of the pin. And now I can mark up the position of the bracket so I can drill the holes. So just doing some checks here to make sure I've got it vertical. And using a center punch, I just uh, marked where to drill. Then I drilled a pilot hole first with a five millimeter drill bit, just in in uh, one side of the square tube. Then uh, put in the ten millimeter drill because they're all ten millimeter bolts. So uh, drill, yeah, drill those four holes, and now just uh, using the little bevel tool to, uh, you know, sort of just take take the swarf off and make the holes nice and neat. Then what I did is I measured down from the top of the pole. I used the top of the pole as a reference with a piece of cornflakes uh, box. I used the cardboard there to make a template of the four holes and then I measured down from the top on the other side of the post used the template to mark the holes and then the same thing I just drilled a pilot hole and then with the 10 millimeter drill bit drilled those four holes <coughs> So now I can actually put the bolts in. Now the bolts are quite long, so uh, you need to cut them to length, which I've already done. So now I can uh, actually bolt the bracket on. I use the clamp just to hold it in place. And then there's a washer and then a lock washer on each side. So there she is, she's all bolted on. Put the actuator on there. Just check that it's level. 
Now, this is the bracket I made for the actuator end. So, I'm just drilling some pilot holes. And I'm going to mount that onto the bottom of the gate just using self drilling, self tapping screws. And again, just cleaning up the holes with the little bevel tool there. So, here I go, I'm mounting the end bracket. Uh, it's still raw metal at the moment, but I, I paint that later on to match the gate. So I'm using those self-drilling, self-tapping screws with the cordless drill. Now I can put the actuator on, drop the pin in. So that's that's what it looks like. So I've made a bunch of brackets here to connect the post onto the top of the fence uh, for the solar panel. So it will become clearer when I'll show you how I install it. So I've etched prime them and then I'll paint them the appropriate colour. This is the control box that comes with the kit. Um, I've already taken the screws out so I'll just take the lid off. Now, that there is the transformer, and that's the input for the domestic 120 volt or 240 volt power supply. Now, I'm not going to use this at all. It's going to be entirely a solar powered system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the outlet of the transformer. which is easy to do, just undo those two screws there, pull the wires out. So I'll just tuck those away up there somewhere. And I'm also going to just take this fitting off where the domestic power supply comes in. This item here is the solar panel um, controller or regulator. Now, if you're going to run it solely off solar power, it's a bit of a pun there, um, you have to connect the panel to this. Um, it's very simple. That, that connection there comes from the solar panel. That one there goes to the batteries. And that one there goes to the load or to the um, you know, to the gate actuator, which which is one of these uh, connections in here. So what I'll do is I'll mount this. In there. The batteries actually go in here. Now these are are 12 volt batteries, so you connect them in series to make it a 24 volt battery pack. So you just have to connect the positive to the negative and then that's your positive and that's your negative for your 24 volts. So they, they give you a connection lead in the kit, that's that red lead there. If I change my mind, I'm actually going to remove the transformer. I can always put it back in later if uh, I ever decide to run it off domestic power. quite heavy so there's no point in having all that extra weight hanging off the cabinet and that makes it easier to mount because I can use actually on the diagonal there the two uh, diagonal bolt holes actually line up with that dimension there so that's very secure. Here in the solar panel. You don't get any cables in the kit at all um, other than about a metre and a half of uh, cable on the gate actuator. So you need to get yourself some twin core cable for the solar panel so what I've done is I've removed the plastic cover and I'm soldering 
the uh, connections. I like like to solder them because they're more secure. And I like melting things. So I've done the soldering, putting the little plastic cap back over the connection box again. Now I'm uh, preparing the two cabinets, uh, drilling holes in them to mount them to the fence. So you have to remove the uh, electronic controller. And as you can see there, I've already sort of marked up the holes. Needed some spaces uh, in the bottom there so that I could get the uh, panel vertical or the, the box vertical. So I did that uh, to both the uh, boxes, got all them ready. Now I'm mounting the solar panel holding bracket to the top of the pole. So I bought some um, 40 millimeter square aluminium tube and I painted it the right color. So now I'm mounting the bracket to the panel. And then the brackets I showed you earlier, uh, that, that's what I'm, they're what I'm going to use to actually mount the pole to the top of the fence. So I made a cap for the top of uh, that pole, drilled a hole in it, and I'm feeding the cable through. So that'll be um, out of sight. So that's it, that's all finished and ready to mount. So here I go, mounting the the uh, pole and the panel to the fence. I drilled a hole in the top of the fence there so the cable could come through. And again, using self uh, drilling, self tapping screws and mounting that to the fence. Fortunately, the, uh, the gate runs east west, uh, the driveway runs north south, so I can get the panel pointing north, which is what it's supposed to do. That's what the bracket looks like. I painted them the appropriate colours so it all blends in. So here's the pre-drilled controller boxes. I'm now mounting them to the fence. So that's the battery box I'm doing there. Here's the electronic controller box. It holds the, all the electronics and the solar panel regulator. So there, there we go, that's all nice and secure. So again, I like to solder the, the connections. So I just solder them. I've got some little pieces of heat shrink that I put on the cables. So I slide the heat shrink, shrink over the join using the heat gun, shrink that down. So there's all the three connections done to the cables um, from the regulator. So this is the, I'm doing the load. So this is the output from the regulator to the actuator controller and I've uh, taken that bracket away and painted it uh, the cream color to match the gate so now I'm putting that on Now this is the permanent mounting of the actuator. So I've dropped the pins in, put the clips in place. And I've already connected the battery cable and the solar panel cable to the controller. So now I've got to connect the actuator cable into the electronic controller. So there's five wires, I think, in the cable from the actuator. And it's all very clear where they go. The circuit board there for the controller is marked up very well, so it's pretty difficult to make a mistake. If you are only having a single actuator, you use motor number one, which is on the left-hand side of that terminal block there. So I'm connecting the five cables. There's a little label there that tells you where they go.
So after I've connected that, that means the gate actuator is connected to the controller. The solar panel is connected to the regulator and the uh, electronic controller is connected to the regulator. And then the only remaining thing is there's a cable there that is connected to where the batteries go. So that's connected to the regulator. And uh, the last thing is to connect the batteries up and then she's all powered up and I can do a test. So now I'm just putting the electronic controller circuit board back in the box. So here's the two 12 volt batteries connected in series using the cable supplied. Connect the positive to the negative. Now I'm connecting the two wires from the battery cable that I'd uh, prepared earlier and soldered to the regulator. Battery is in place. Now it's all powered up. You can so I'm just showing you the cable there. This is you know, just a temporary setup at the moment. You can see the flashing lights there. Shows that she's powered. And I'm just going to test it using the standard settings. It has a very comprehensive uh, installation manual. Here's the first test. And it works. Eureka. Now I'll hit the button to close it. So here's the cabling after I sort of tidied it all up. And I also added another cable. Um, I bought some trailer 7 core cable. And you can see there I've run it down into a piece of poly tube. And then it goes into the ground and I lifted a row of bricks on the driveway and I ran that cable under the driveway through to the other side. I drilled a hole in a brick and brought it up inside the post. It was right up the post there. I, so I wanted to connect a, a warning light and two manual switches, one on each side of the post. And I also wanted to convert the manual latch there into a electronic operating latch. which I did by purchasing a 24 volt DC solenoid off eBay for about $23 delivered. So here it is there, that's a picture of it. I took the plunger out of the solenoid and made my own plunger, which is just a piece of 10 millimeter rod that I've um, cut to length and I used some very strong stainless steel wire, wire to connect it to the lever. So here's the, when I test it, see, it just pulls the lever for me and opens the gate. So the, the all this is very clearly marked up on the circuit diagram there, so it's not difficult. So you can connect, you know, warning lights. So here's the final wiring in the control box. Here are the five cables from the gate actuator. Here's the load wires from the regulator, 24 volts. They're the two wires for the manual push button switches on the other side. There are the two wires for the warning light on the other side of the gate, and there are the two wires that operate the lock. And here's the final product. All works really nicely. The strobe light there doesn't get picked up in the video because of the frame rate, but believe me, it does work. And here it is closing so it all works really really well I'm very happy with it and then it automatically latches so I must say I wouldn't normally recommend you wear thongs for this sort of work but um, but my excuse is that I'm still recovering from the broken right ankle is quite badly broken it's been plated and screwed and it's quite swollen and uh, wearing shoes is just way too uncomfortable when I was uh, doing this work and uh, would swell up quite badly. Um, also my uh, uh, standard of dress is, uh, <laughs> is uh, pretty abysmal as well um, but it was a very hot day. Uh, it was nearly 40 degrees when I was doing most of that work so that's uh, why I had the old blue business shirt on and the hat and, and the shorts and um, 
uh, I'd never get a job as a hand model. My uh, right hand looks shocking, uh, but that's also because uh, that's recovering from surgery as well. So there's a big incision there and there's plates and screws in it. And it just uh, looks like a hand of a 100 year old. So uh, hopefully the next video I'll be wearing uh, better, <laughs> better clothing and better safety equipment. But thanks for watching it.